$2 million, that's the amount of money in the pockets of some local citizens. The city of Baltimore has spent that much money uh, paying people who filed suit against the police department for misconduct and won. Just last week, the city law department says it has paid more than $2.5 million since 2015 to people accusing police of a use of force, false arrest, and illegal searches. Now that number does not include pending cases against members of the city's now defunct gun trace task force. How corruption took hold of that elite group of city officers may remain a mystery until the end of this year. The scandal first broke in 2017. Tonight, Operation Crime and Justice lead investigative reporter Joy LaPola explains why something that happened almost three years ago is still affecting policing right now. Corrupt cops on camera committing crimes. Uh, you can see the cocaine up in the visor. And right after that, you can see a little, uh, you can see the handgun right there, too. This is body-worn camera footage recorded in August 2016. First Detective Graham, he pulled out the handgun and the cocaine. All of these officers are now in federal prison. Is there a reason you have a gun in the car and cocaine? A rogue group of officers who stole from residents, dealt drugs, and fraudulently collected overtime for years. It's all. Fast forward to 2019, and how that was allowed to happen is now at the center of an independent investigation being led by this man, Michael Bromwich. We're hopeful, truly hopeful, that a full and complete airing of the facts with absolutely no punches pulled will promote the healing process that this city and this police department so badly need. For members monitoring the Baltimore Police Department's reform efforts under the consent decree, there's one question they want answered. What was it about BPD's culture that allowed the scandal to unfold without any internal repercussions for the officers? It's a question one city leader says could take until the end of 2020 to answer, but there is no deadline. Is that a potential problem when you're considering where we are with reform efforts. You don't have the luxury of waiting 12 months or 10 months or even six months. Former right FBI right agent right. Dr. Tyrone Powers right. isn't the only one who's expressed a sense of urgency. During a court hearing in January, Judge James Berdar brought up the issue asking, when is Mr. Bromwich's report due? Baltimore City Solicitor Andre Davis said, it's open, Judge. We didn't want to impose a deadline, but he expects by the end of the year. The judge replies, now is the time we're making reforms. I don't want to rush that critical piece of work, but we need to see the results. There is concern that reform efforts already in place under the consent decree could be scrapped, further setting back the department. People have to have a sense of urgency. For Dr. Tyrone Powers, it's the violence on city streets where his attention is focused. You can't have all these shootings and not have a gun trace task force unit. You just need one to do things in the right way. For now, it appears those plans are on hold Absolutely. until Bromwich and his team are able to identify the root causes of the gun trace task force scandal and how exactly that corruption evolved. Oh, still recording? Joy LaPulva, Fox 45 News.